All right, hello again. In this uh, exercise, I want to discuss how to make a flag, right? Like a waving flag, flag that waves in the wind. Like for instance, something like this here. All right, playing this, you see, uh, as if it's waving in the flag in the wind. And you notice the left side here, which is um, kind of representing where it would be attached to the pole. Um, you might want to see that one fixed, so that one's not moving. Uh, although in reality it, it actually would also because it, it's probably attached just on one end and on the other end but not all along the whole bar um, but still we can we can imagine uh, we can blur it also <coughs> and we can do all sorts of crazy things with that um, this one here is uh, waving in the wind a, a little bit more waving in the breeze and then and then we can do all sorts of other wacky stuff with it and you know turn it into something that's not much of a of a flag anymore <coughs> but it all comes down to initially figuring out um, how to make this waving motion right how to make it look like there's some waves that propagate from left to right and not in a perfect harmony but with a little bit of disturbances as well so Basically, something like this is the wave pattern we need to, to have go from left to right across the map, uh, across the flag. Uh, here's another way to look at it, kind of quantified, and turn it around as well. So, <coughs> um, lots of fun stuff you can do with it once you start exploring these features. And that's all done in PD Pro. Uh, I've used version 8. I would think you can probably use version 7.2 as well. Um, if you have version 7, give it a try. Uh, but let's let's get in uh, right in here and, and see how to do that. So the first trick is to uh, create a, uh, a gradient that travels from left to right. And so what I mean is uh, there's a couple of ways to do that. You could you could use something like a, a filled rectangle right and uh, perhaps pick a dark color gray, fill it here a few times something like this so it's not all even not all the same type of rectangles all right something like this and then you uh, you blur it with the filter and like a Gaussian blur will get you there really quick there you go so you got some sort of a, a pattern that goes across there uh, and now you need to animate that now so that's this is one way to do it I've actually I used uh, in the prior example I used a different technique in, ba in fact, let's have a look quickly at what that looked like once it's animated. Um, so here's the flag that I created, the flag pattern that is, and when I play it, you see it go mostly from left to right. But I also did uh, a little bit of a disturbance to that. All right, so, so how did I create this pattern in the first place, right? So let's go and uh, give it a starting point, just plain white and a couple of filled rectangles because that will probably work just just the same way I used actually sort of a gradient fill and and filled it with gradients left to right right to left left to right right to left and so on I'll let you uh, try that if you prefer but this this will work actually pretty well too <coughs> I think uh, we can go with Gaussian blur and just do something like this All right so here we have a pattern uh, of waves and um, it's going to need to travel from left to right so let's make that happen by actually creating turning this into an animation animation create and say we need a hundred or let's say 99 because I'm lazy two keys is enough and <coughs> we will uh, animate this now right now it's not moving so we need to go to the timeline that we can get that right here or from animation timeline and in the timeline we can find a, a set of transform filters that will work across the animation including the shift and so when we go to transform shift um, what you can do is you can transform you can shift it from left to right so initially let's keep it at zero that would be our first frame here and mark that as a keyframe create a key click that once and then you go all the way to the other end at the end of the animation and you just shift it a little bit I don't know how much you want to shift it if you go about this much a hundred it's a full shift if you go 200 it's two full shifts um, so you go, you know, something, something around there, make it a, a, a full shift 100%. Keyframe that, and then <coughs> uh, you can make it a straight line transition, or you can have it a little bit of spline interpolated with smoothing, uh, and apply that. Now, if if you're not too familiar with it, make sure you leave the the this box checked here, save undos, so that you can actually undo. 
uh, if you are adventurous or if you know what you're doing you can spare the time and not do that and I'll leave it like that so we now have as we can see a series of uh, bars that move from left to right now one thing I indicated is I needed to make sure that the left side appears to be attached to a pole so I need to uh, keep it at that color so it doesn't change position it doesn't move uh, wave in the wind and, and one way to do that would be to capture that uh, with the custom brush right capture this one image that goes from here to here something like so and capture that in the custom brush you can see it when you store it and you can perhaps also uh, make it somewhat transparent towards the right side and make it very transparent kind of uh, fade it so it just gradually fades from this grayish to whatever so so it will release the color and let's store that one there you go and so we don't need this one anymore so this brush what I'd like to do let's go and preview it PRV here when we are on the the brush tool we can see it here and what you need to do is simply uh, place it right over here now there is a, a brush animation or brush keyframe we can use for that so with the brush keyframe we can place the brush where we want it right here on the left side right we can also make it a little bit bigger if you if we don't want to miss a, a row of pixels at the top or something like that so let's scale it up a little bit there you go and we know it's fully opaque on the left side and turns transparent on the right side so we can you can use that to quite nicely uh, position it just around here that will cover throughout the entire animation oh, now we have a, an area here we missed so let's give it a little bit more to the left there you go so now we have this gray that stays there and fades to to white and uh, transparent so it, it eventually releases it, it, it shows the color that's moving underneath it but not right at the edge so that will remain dominant there let's go render that <coughs> and so that way we have the bar on the left side always at the same color it doesn't shift it doesn't move because you have to remember this is this represents a displacement map this is going to be the movement of the flag and the tool we use for that of course is our 3d designer so let's go and have a look at that this is now good it's not fully clean we could probably do a little bit of blurring on that as well in fact why not do that now with the timeline again we can go to a blur on each frame here do a gaussian blur on each frame let's uh give it a lot of blur there you go and apply that then that way if there's any little imperfections or noise we can we can kind of uh, get rid of that right that looks much better now there's one more little disturbance we need which is kind of a wavy anomaly and to make it look like it's not all perfectly symmetrical I mean this this pattern here that we currently have if we were to animate this in 3d as a displacement it would look a little bit too perfect right it would look like there is no natural no nature to it and what I'd like to do therefore is give it a little bit more displacement in 2d which is under the transform and I could do twirls I could do um, wave distortions right now the wave distortion I don't need that much this is multiple sources one here one here probably a few more three wave distortion sources I really just need one and I don't need them at high frequency I need them fairly small a fairly large wavelength something like that all right so move that to the left something like this so you get very subtle changes there not not very small high frequency displacement and you don't need a very big displacement although you could experiment with that if you want to show a flag that's really really in rough weather with strong winds and very strong displacements so anyway this this probably will do just fine and um, the speed at which these mo wave move uh, waves move as well you could you could go with that change that a little bit okay apply that and again keep that save undo is if you realize the result is not what you wanted also save often whatever you're doing here you should have saved I didn't do that shame on me um, we really should have saved that every once in a while go to animation and save that right and then you'll see um, <coughs> you know flag two or something like that right save that quickly uh, in a quick memory dump that will go 
and uh, it takes a lot of disk space but it, it's good to have that backup anyway so so at this time we have this animation and the question is how do we turn this into a flag that's animated well first of all let's go into the um, the timeline again here and in the timeline and let me shift control shift drag this to the right I guess I don't need this anymore um, what I'm gonna do now is uh, look for my 3d designer so let's go to transform filters there it is here's the transform group and I'm gonna click on 3d designer and the first thing you notice is that there is a little bit of a wavy pattern here that's indeed the displacement based on those bands the gray bands you know the brighter the go they are the more they go one way and the darker they are the more they go the other way it's a displacement based on that elevate it's basically an elevation map and the elevation of the the this flag is what makes it look like it's waving in the wind and so uh, one thing you can do is to add some perspective and um, turn it shaded and uh, perhaps uh, grab the color from the front which is grayish right this this pattern this color here uh, can actually be used and uh, you could even use a, a real map like the map of Switzerland I had a little bit earlier we'll take a look at uh, that in a second um, but in the for, for right now let's do this very quickly um, not not too much precision on that uh, let's let's rotate it a little bit something like so so something like this right and move it back a little bit now this is just going to be an initial view you don't click animate here because we actually invoked this one this 3d designer instance from the timeline so you click ok and now you got your chance to to do the final positioning so you see that right in here and your positioning and you can animate that too you can you can, I mean you can interpolate through different keyframes all right so you, for instance you could have it like so initially for the first keyframe and you notice as I'm going through that how it's displacing it so I'm gonna go one keyframe here and then I'm gonna go to this middle of the animation and perhaps uh, rotate it this way and also zoom in a little bit and move it down there you go uh, maybe a little bit rotation there okay and keyframe that and so now we apply that and so it's doing a displacement with those uh, gray values it's also showing the gray values because that's what I chose but uh, here's a first look at our waving animation animated flag it's very coarse because we didn't go to the highest level of detail yet but now this is where we say okay let's do it again and, and that's where you'll be really happy to have saved the animation before that so let's go open and redo that flag number two it was there you go copy that and so now this time I'm going to load a map in the background so I'm gonna load uh, let's do J for jumping to the background that's the the swap buffer and I'm going to load the map of Switzerland so I'm gonna choose red as the background maybe fill it with the fill tool like so and then I'm gonna choose white and I'm going to use the rectangle fill right and so I'm gonna do two cross two two rectangles one like so and another one like this now this is not a perfect Swiss flag shame on me um, but um, you know it will do for for this and, and I can go with uh, let's go and use the color picker right click here to make sure that I have right for the secondary color and I can use the rectangle tool to erase to red these parts if they are too fat and so all right that's good enough for my flag right I mean in, in reality any picture you put in there let's let's in fact let's add a little bit of a filter on top of that uh, let's for instance add a little bit of a weave pattern to that all right whatever that picture is this could be your JPEG this could be a drawing this could be a photograph this could be anything you want a raster image you load and you stamp down or you, you put right in there in fact you could have a little white border or black border around it let's give it a blue border uh, with the re with the rectangle fill here like so a little blue a little blue here and a little blue here there you go okay all right so this is a weird pattern but uh, it will work just fine and we can go J jump for you know, jump back to the main buffer or go hit image here they, they swap the buffers and you see we're back to our animation right because when you jump you see this preview here in the timeline 
that's showing you what you have in the current buffer that you're looking at. You're looking at the swap buffer, jump back to the main buffer, and you have the animation here. All right, so <coughs> now at this point, let's do the same thing with the 3D designer in the timeline. And this time we will use the swap buffer, the image from the swap buffer as the background to be mapped onto that map. Okay, so let's go to 3D designer and it kind of remembers our previous parameters. We still want a fairly strong displacement, but this time we want it higher quality and most importantly, we want it the color from the swap image. So there is our map and we can have the amplitude a little bit exaggerated, a little bit more distortion on that. Okay, that. And then now we have here our chance to uh, give it a final angle, uh, distance, like this and what we'll do is we'll keyframe a short animation where we go from here to the very end and we'll just zoom in very slowly uh, move a little bit to the right and also turn around it I think that would be this one here there you go and keyframe that don't forget to keyframe it uh, straight line interpolation and apply that and so now you have a nice little waving flag with a texture with an uh, image on it <coughs> and uh, you know I recommend doing this at fairly high resolution if you have enough memory to hold it because there will be some slight lighting imperfections every once in a while um, and you might want to now smooth it so if I show this at 100% it may be too big but you see all this detail so one thing you could do now is to blur it uh, with the filters in the timeline with my blur collection here do a little Gaussian blur not too much you know that's way too much let's give it just a little bit like so apply that all across it and then uh, make the image smaller right so let's say now we want the, uh, and make sure you save that too by the way as an AVI at the least or in native format save it but uh, we'll go to image and um, save that excuse me res resample it there you go let's make it half the size and <coughs> don't need to be picky on the quality today. <coughs> Let's make it half the original size, and then that way we'll we'll probably get rid of some of the imperfections again as well. And there you go. All right, so that's how, in a nutshell, we did things like these. Uh, I mean, there's there's a few more things you could do in terms of additional animation. You could go, for instance, the wave in the breeze transform there wave in breeze that will that that will yank it left to right a little bit more see how it's doing this thing and now it looks more like it's attached to uh, just this pole and this pole this corner and this corner of the flag right so let's go and render that <coughs> and 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 basically it gives us an impression as if this entire flag is is at, you know like battling it out in the wind all right um let's just finish with a final animation that we actually did that way load let's load an avi uh let's get uh, i don't know which one should we take oh let's take this one here okay so this was the avi this one i think i saved at uh, dvx or xvid and uh, let's go play this